and I placed an emergent left femoral CBC. It was explained to the intensivist that this was an emergent line and should be changed when possible. The next day I was called to replace this. Although morbidly obese, I was able to have my partner hold the neck up and under ultrasound guidance access the left jugular vein for a low entry triple lumen catheter insertion. The radiograph demonstrated the catheter going to the left of the mediastinum, indicating a left-sided superior vena cava or possible arterial cannulation. This was simply ruled out by drawing a venous blood gas from the line and assessing the PO2. Finally, you see the patient with the high left jugular vein puncture. This was easily replaced with a right-sided axillary triple lumen insertion. This past week, I placed 68 triple lumen Shiley and arterial lines in critical COVID patients. One clinician, 68 patients in a 700 bed hospital full of COVID patients. So you can only imagine how many other lines were placed by the rest of the hospital staff. Hospitals cannot afford to waste a single device. Therefore, responsible use number one is 100% ultrasound guidance for all catheter placements. This ensures needle entry assessment of complications, and tip confirmation with scanning the right atrium and flushing for a bubble test. Realizing that an ultrasound-guided peripheral IV is the same technique as an ultrasound-guided arterial cannulation. Substituting a sterile peripheral IV kit for an arterial catheter insertion tray does not only save money, but it saves on resources. During a crisis like this with an insurmountable volume, substituting a sterile peripheral for an arterial kit can make a huge impact. Triple lumen catheters are becoming scarce, but triple lumen catheters also come in a pick line version, which can be trimmed to the desired length. They are placed with the modified Seldinger technique or the interventional radiology trays are placed over the wire Seldinger style. Pediatric departments also carry a smaller French triple lumen catheter. Dialysis catheters traditionally come in a radiology tray and are dropped into a triple lumen catheter kit, but this wastes the triple lumen catheter. So it's possible to order dialysis catheters in a max barrier kit, but until then, to save on your triple lumen catheter kits, all radiology departments have draping kits that they use for all of their procedures and these can be combined with your dialysis catheters. Finally, meet up with your vascular access teams. The PICK line kits have all of the necessary equipment and even provide the option of starting your dialysis catheter with a mini stick technique. I never imagined that I would live through a pandemic. But April 5th, as the United States coronavirus began to spiral out of control, it was Dr. Mauro Pitarudi and his team from Italy that released their vascular access experiences from their crisis as one of the hardest hit countries in the world. Dr. Pitarudi has been a mentor to me and countless others around the world in vascular access. And during this crisis, he would still go back and forth with me via messaging on what I was encountering and what he had already seen. His team's recommendations and experiences matched our own experience here in the States. And I'd like to review them one more time. Number one, protect the operator. There are few vascular access specialists. Therefore, if one of us go out, the expert level inserter cannot be replaced. Wear your personal protective equipment. Number two, ensure the effectiveness of the maneuver in other words, assure that it is a safe and achievable access solution through accurate assessments and the use of ultrasound visualization and insertion tools. Three, reduce the risk of complications to the patient by choosing the safest insertion site and matching that with the safest inserter performing the procedure. Four, avoid wasting resources. Use of an ultrasound guided peripheral for arterial lines. Using triple lumen pick lines when low on triple lumen catheters. Consider placing arterial lines for frequent arterial blood gases to conserve on respiratory therapist role. Femoral vein for those patients who are unable to lie supine. Stable patients receiving axillary or jugular vein TLCs. Being aware of hypercoagulability the use of sliding lung sign to assess for pneumothorax, tip navigation when possible, and lastly, catheter securement. This has been my first experience in dealing with a pandemic. 
but being able to converse with a country who is months ahead of us. This collaboration via social media can and will save lives. This photograph is being used with permission from my patient. This patient arrived to the ER and was sent directly to the floor as a non-COVID patient. She looked awful, and my partner Tony and I looked at each other and knew she was probable COVID-19 positive. We put on our PPE because at this point, we were at a stage where the staff was only protected with our positive patients. Ultrasound assessment revealed her vasculature to be small caliber for a double lumen pick line because she needed TPN. The axillary vein was visible in the delta pectoral groove. As I entered the vein, I looked up at Tony. I said, she's positive. Look at her blood. It was black. She was immediately placed on precautions by our staff based on these findings and her clinical appearance. When I removed the drapes, I saw her tattoo. And I saw for the first time an inspiration for our specialty, the central venous catheter under the tattoo of life. We all make a contribution to patient care, especially during this crisis. And this was the first opportunity where our hospital systems were overwhelmed with critically ill patients. And this was the opportunity for the ultrasound guided vascular access generation to make their contribution. All of the training, all of the difficult cases culminated to this one insurmountable enemy. And scan by scan, safe puncture by safe puncture, we have provided these patients and our staff with safe, reliable vascular access. I would like to dedicate this webinar to all of the healthcare workers around the world, especially those specializing in vascular access. May you all stay safe and thank you.